Hello, hello, hello. I am artist Diana Ja. I am here uh, provided by the Reed Ann Trotty Library from the DeKalb County Library System, and I am doing Kwanzaa collages. So you are here with me. I'm artist Diana Ja. I don't know who you are. I can't touch you. I can't see you, but I will give you my contact information at the end of this three-part series because I definitely want to see what you've created at the end, okay? Maybe we can talk about it. How was this experience for you? Would you do this again? But you know what? We're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's start with the end in mind. We are talking about Kwanzaa. I've had this book ever since I was a little child, okay? This book right here, and I've celebrated Kwanzaa for many, many, many years. I've even hosted a few Kwanzaas myself, all right? Now, you may be celebrating Kwanzaa for the first time this year. Maybe you never heard of Kwanzaa, or maybe this is a part of your family tradition. But what we're gonna do new is we're gonna create the whole Kwanzaa setup, the whole ensemble, all the pieces and all the parts, but we're gonna create it in a two-dimensional piece, in a collage piece, okay? So I'm gonna lead you through that process. And I made a promise to myself. I said, I'm going to do this art class with everyday accessibly priced materials okay so whether you are an artist a professional artist or a professional craftsperson or someone who just thought this is a nice family event which it is make sure to include as many people as possible i went to michael's which is my local art supply chain and i got some accessible supplies so this video is just going to show you a few of the supplies that we'll be working with. You can go out and get them and then come back for video number two. So let me jump right into it. And I hope you don't mind if I read a few excerpts from this book. This book is The Seven Days of Kwanzaa, How to Celebrate Them. The Seven Days of Kwanzaa, called the Nguzo Saba. It is Swahili. This book is a scholastic book by Angela Shelf Madeiras. Do you have to have this book? Absolutely not. I'm gonna do a few uh, screen shares with you just to let you know you can do some Google searches and educate yourself. What I'm doing is I'm leading the art class and I want you to go ahead and take this time to learn about Kwanzaa if this is new to you or reestablish what principles stand out for you, right? Because I can't pick one. Right when I think, oh yeah, 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 it's this in Guzo Saba, it's this particular day, I get to the next one, I say, ooh, that's me too. Ooh, that's me too. I might as well name myself Miss Kwanzaa, right? So let's get into the supplies. I got myself a glue stick. You do not need a fat, fat glue stick, but you know, I don't have all day with you. I wish I did, but a fatter glue stick will help things go a little quicker, okay? Use the glue stick of your choice. Um, this one is uh, non-acidic, so it means that uh, it won't eat away at your paper after time. Let me show you some of my favorite art supplies ever. A dear sister friend gave these to me. Modge Podge, Modge Podge. My, but I'm gonna help you so you don't have to learn the way I learned. This one is gloss which means that whatever you do, it's gonna be shiny, like somebody vaseline you up real good. You know what I'm talking about? I know most of y'all know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about, mm, I don't know what to tell you, <laughs> but this is gloss. So that means that whenever the light hits this Mod Podge, it's going to shine so bright that you won't really be able to see your artwork. Use it if you want to, use it sparingly, all right, or else you're gonna look like a shiny copper penny. And so is your artwork. This one is matte. Use matte, okay? Because matte gives you the sealant. It gives you the protector. It kind of like melts all your pieces together. I use the word melts because that's what it feels like. It brings it all together. It bonds it all together. But it doesn't get too much glare from the light. Speaking of glare from the light, let's change this up. Help ourselves a little bit. Ah, that's better, isn't it? We are a work in progress, right? We are doing things differently than we've ever done them before. And so we are learning as we go. So this is Mod Podge Matte. Highly recommended. 
Did I mention get yourself some education? Education. Get a book. Go on Google. Ask your grandma. Ask somebody in your family. Ask a friend. I know you know somebody who knows something about Kwanzaa. Michael's has, and Michael's again, I told you, was my local art uh, supply chain for art supplies. They have a $5.99 shelf and they have an $8.99 shelf. I went to the $8.99 shelf because I wanted to show you. You could share this with some friends and family, okay? This is enough paint, and this is acrylic paint, by the way, that you can share with friends and family. So you can do your collage piece whatever color you want but i wonder if you know right now what three colors absolutely must be in your kwanzaa art <laughs> i mean what three colors come on y'all red black and green okay i got myself a book you don't need to do this but me if I choose my colors and my ideas in advance it helps me to not be all over the place and let me tell you a secret being all over the place is not a bad thing okay don't let nobody tell you that but if you want to be more focused and more intentional go ahead and choose your colors in advance so that your ideas don't get away from you. So I just got this book. It's one of my favorite books. It's a secret language of color. You do not need this. I'm just being extra. I got myself different types of paper. I've got some watercolor paper. I have some printmaking paper. You don't need printmaking paper. It's just that this paper is really heavy and I'll show you later. This particular paper is very heavy. They call it 400 series. It's the best. I probably shouldn't be using it because I'm a real printmaker and I'm using the good stuff, but I like some thick paper, all right? You could use poster board. You could use any type of thick, heavy paper. And then I have some of this paper right here. This is a lighter paper. You can hear it. It's not so heavy. This is called mixed media paper. I like mixed media paper because you can do watercolors, markers, you can do acrylic, you can put some Mod Podge on it, you can use ink, pencil, pastels, crayons. Are you using crayons? Whatever that you're using. You can use it on this mixed media paper. Now I want you to hear, this is a light sound, right? I want you to hear what heavy paper sounds like. Sounds like thunder. Sounds like thunder. Hear that? gonna reach down and get some more paper for you I did get a little fancy this paper costs 79 cent a sheet and it looks like what it looks like somewhere I'd rather be right now it looks like some water some sand and some water at the beach but I just got it to represent water Water is really important in the Kwanzaa rituals or some of the practices of Kwanzaa, and you'll see why later. I did get some of this. Now, this costs $1.99 a sheet, but I really liked it, okay? It looks like wood, and this looks like wood. And then I got this. This is for the Mkeka. You don't know what that is yet, or maybe you already do, but this is for the mat. So I just got some burlap. I got all of these different papers to provide texture. Texture is something that you can feel, all right? Now, when we're working, we like to 
think about our steps before we go. So we're going to start with the end in mind. I told you all, we are creating frame-worthy art. And so I'm starting with the frame. This frame inside where it's brown is 12 inches by 18 inches. I'm actually going to do the piece horizontally. Okay? 12 inches by 18 inches. That means that we can take this mat out, lay it down on a piece of paper, and trace the inside very lightly with a pencil, and our artwork should not extend beyond that, because if it does, it'll get covered by this. Please, please, please pick your frame. Whether you go to the dollar store and your artwork piece is going to be 8 by 10, or whether you go to an art supply store, or whether you have a frame at home, measure out your frame first so that you don't get upset and find out that your artwork will not, won't fit later. We're going to avoid that. I do have some inspiration. This is one of my favorite pieces of inspiration. Yeah, it's a pillow. <laughs> I love the design. I love the prints. I do it on my artwork all the time. I just love this print. It feels very um, African to me. And I love including African elements into my art because I am African, African American. And I love reaching back into my heritage and putting these designs into my art. Yes, artist Diana Ja, we have a lot of supplies, but here's some fun stuff. Toothbrushes, old toothbrushes, not the toothbrush you're using every day. But look, choo, 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 choo. Yes, toothbrushes are for flicking. And what'll happen is when you flick paint, it gives it some rhythm, some texture. It makes it more interesting to look at. And so we can use these toothbrushes to aim and flick the paint where it needs to go. It gives your artwork some more pizzazz, some more interest, some more visual interest, okay? I told you we're going to create a frame-worthy piece of work. And since we're on toothbrushes, how about this? What's that? You know what that is. Q-tip. Get some Q-tips out. Because you know what? Q-tips make some mighty fine, perfect little dots. Yes, they do. Get yourself a pencil. Do better than me. Get yourself a pencil with an eraser. And while you're at it, get yourself a pencil sharpener. Your fired pencil. Here, here's a better one. Get yourself a pencil with an eraser. Mm. Right here I have scissors. If these scissors are not your speed, then you can use some child-like scissors, safety scissors, because I don't know how old you are. Sometimes I need to use safety scissors, and I'm an older lady, okay? You get what feels right for you. You can get yourself a sponge brush. You can get these from the dollar store. You can get yourself some of these, what they call, chip brushes. These work really well when you're using really watery paint. They're real soft, and you can drag some really watery paint across the paper. I really shouldn't be showing you all these because these are the big boys. These are the nice, nice paint brushes. But hey, I don't know who's watching. You may only have the good stuff. Use these if you want to. Get yourself some different size paint brushes. Okay? Whatever you want to work with. Yes, this has seen better days. Perfect! That'll work. Don't be irresponsible like me. This was me being irresponsible. I let some paint dry on the tip. When we're finished with our work, let us immediately wash these. Matter of fact, keep them in some water, okay? That way you don't have to have this issue, all right? 
I'm too old to be having these issues. I made a mistake. I like this right here. Some spatulas. Okay, this will be good when you're smoothing the paint on and off. All right, if you don't have these, no problem. Go get yourself um, a plastic butter knife. That'll work. Get yourself some water. You need to keep these paint brushes. You need to keep them wet and you need to keep them clean. So get yourself some water in a bowl, not the good bowl. Don't say um, artist D and I job told you to use anything good. No good bowls. And while we're at it, no good rags. Cause you know, anything could happen. You wanna get to it quick. You might spill some water. You might wanna wipe off some paint. Use the old dirty rags. Please don't use the good ones, okay? I'm grown, so I won't get in trouble, but I don't know about you. I don't know how old you are. I don't know what's going on. Get yourself a palette. If you don't have palette, get yourself um, some plates. You know, if you use styrofoam or you have any styrofoam laying around, you can wash these off. Use them again, these styrofoam trays. You need these when you want to mix your paint, all right? You might want to get a bigger bowl. I'm messy, so I spill water a lot. So I need a bigger bowl to wash off my paintbrush, a bigger jar, okay? Something that you don't mind getting dirty. I found these. I do not know why I have them or where they came from, but I like them. These make dots and circles of different sizes and I know that I'm gonna use these for show for show for show all right I like them they're kind of soft they're like spongy so I'm gonna use them and last but not least did I say the word sponge here you have some sponges sponges give you texture here I am with the word texture again we want to build up our work we want to create texture and it'll give us more visual interest okay people are looking go did you do that you did that yeah I did that okay so get yourself some texture and any other way that you could think of creating texture okay you can ball up some saran wrap you can ball up a brown paper bag, anything that we can use to manipulate and stamp paint on here and there. Because what? We're about to do what? Some frame worthy art. Okay? I think that, oh, I'm a little embarrassed to show you this because this is not, uh, I didn't remember why I had this. I just pulled it out. It seemed like something I should have, but I do remember now. You want to keep your paint wet so it doesn't dry up we're not here to waste money or time okay uh i am reclaiming my time all 2020 and all of 2021 and this will help you reclaim yours all right just spray over that paint keep the paint moist keep the paint wet and last but not least bring your friends bring your family okay let's do this together because kwanzaa is not for the one person it's for the community it's for unity all right so now that you know what we're working with i'm gonna clean up my work area i will see you soon to discuss how we're gonna get into this okay what are we gonna do first and i'll give you a little sneak peek we're gonna create some papers okay we're just going to get into the paint get into the supplies and we're going to create some papers and it's going to be like what am i doing why am i doing it this way we all have different learning styles i'm just teaching you the one that flows naturally from me if you like to plan it out write a step by step go ahead and do that i'm going to give you the way that i do it because i want you to explore i want you to feel i want you to Feel the colors as much as possible. I want you to have fun with the paints, with the colors, creating textures before we get to the technical technical part of putting your collage together. Now, if you don't mind, I would like to read a few things with you. All right. I'm not a librarian, but one of my friends made fun of me and said, I have a librarian voice. Well, 
I told her, let me hear that voice. Let me hear what it sounds like. Do you agree? You'll see. Kwanzaa is not a religious holiday or one that honors a heroic person. It is not a holiday that is celebrated in Africa. Kwanzaa is an original African-American holiday. Kwanzaa is a time when African-Americans join together to honor the traditions of their ancestors. Really, really important. Always invite your ancestors with you, okay? Always invite your ancestors. They're here, okay? They wanna be a part of this, all right? They wanna be with you. Planning for the year to come and working on ways to make themselves better people and their community a better community are important parts of the holiday. Kwanzaa is a celebration of the past, the present, and the future. Now, this holiday was created by Dr. Milana Karinga, okay? Uh, he was still in graduate school when the idea started growing within him. There were a few things that happened um, in Watts. There was a riot and a lot of things that happened. Neighborhood was destroyed and he had a vision to bring us together with purpose for having us come together in unity, working together to build and support each other. And that's where Kwanzaa was birthed from. All right. So thank you, Dr. Milana Karinga. Dr. Karinga also incorporated many African customs, traditions, symbols, and words from the Swahili language when he created Kwanzaa. Swahili is a non-tribal African language that is spoken in East Africa and many other areas across the continent. Many Swahili words and phrases like Habaragani, which means, what's the news? Okay? And Harambe, let's pull together, are used as part of the Kwanzaa celebration. All of the words and symbols used during Kwanzaa are defined in this book. But remember I told you, you don't need this book. You can get this book, any other book. Go on Google, ask a relative, okay? Dr. Karinga also established a special set of goals called the Nguzo Saba. Now, I love this part, okay? I always try to think, what's my favorite? Nguzo Saba, and I think the beauty of the Nguzo Saba is I cannot pick just one. Almost when you're thinking of community, you can't isolate just one. They work together. They, they work together in harmony, okay? So I can't imagine the Nguzo Saba independently, separate, all right? It's my favorite part of Kwanzaa. The Nguzo Saba are to be memorized, discussed, and acted upon during the seven days of Kwanzaa and beyond throughout the year, okay? The Nguzo Saba means seven principles in Swahili. And here are the seven principles. Here are the Nguzo Saba. Umoja, which means unity. To work together in peace with our family, our community, our nation, and our race. Kuji Chagulia, that means self determination. I know somebody named Kuji Chakalia. I know somebody named Umoja. Kuji Chakalia, self-determination, to make up our minds to accomplish the goals we have set for ourselves. Ujima, collective work and responsibility. Have you heard of the term, I am my brother's keeper? I am my sister's keeper? Well, if you heard of that, think of Ujima, which is collective work and responsibility to team together to solve problems and to make our community a safe and productive place. Ujama, cooperative economics. Money makes the world go round. Is that true? I don't know, but you know what? It's a necessary, very necessary tool, money. Ujama, cooperative economics to build and maintain our own stores, shops, and other businesses and profit from them together. Do you buy black? You don't have to be black to buy black. Buying black and buying with small black owned businesses, large black owned businesses is a very intentional purpose. There are beautiful restaurants, people who make things, craftspeople, different services that are provided and you know what they need your support all right so do you buy black then you are practicing ujama cooperative economics you don't have to be brown skin to do that okay 
to build and maintain our own stores, shops, and other businesses and profit from them together. Nia, I know somebody named Nia, purpose. To have a plan for the future and to be willing to help others succeed as well. Each one, teach one, each one, reach one. All right? What is your why? So when you think of Nia and your purpose, think about what is your why? All right? Kuumba, creativity. I could be named Kuumba. Probably you too if you're drawn to the arts, right? And you don't have to be a maker to participate in this. Have fun. Do something you haven't done before. Do something with your friends. Do something with your family. Again, Kwanzaa is not meant to be celebrated and engaged in alone. All right? Kaumba, creativity. To always do as much as we can in any way we can in order to leave our community a better and more beautiful place. Imani. I know. How many people do I know named Imani? It's such a beautiful, beautiful name. It means faith. To believe with all our heart in our people, our parents, our teachers, our leaders, and the righteousness and victory of our struggle. All right? So those are the Nguzo Saba, the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Now, I want to share my screen with you. I want to show you a little bit of Google research I did. I was nervous for a second there because I was like, do I know how to do this? But it seems that I do. Bear with me. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> okay. So here we have some of the symbols and pieces of Kwanzaa. All right, take a good look. Now, do you know why I decided to go ahead and get that wood? It's not necessary, okay? You can paint it, you can draw it, but I did want to be a little bit fancy. I couldn't help myself. Ah, this is one of my favorite pictures. You see? You know the answer, right? The colors that you must have, all right? As you can see, red, black, and green. You see the corn, the harvest, the pumpkins, some fruit, there's a cup, there's a specific name for that. There's a mat, there's a specific name for that as well. And we will get to it. And then they have a, a, a mask there, all right? And of course the candles and one thing I know about these candles you got to find them they get sold out quick go to your local black owned African store uh, that sells African products go to um, a black owned bookstore and you can generally find these things okay That's a graphic that someone created. So I'm just giving you ideas of how you can think through your particular piece of art, okay? So they're doing the traditional colors of red, black, and green. They're spicing it up with some gold. They're doing some pattern and design. Kind of reminds me a little bit of my pillow. And of course, how you spell the word Kwanzaa, which is a Swahili word meaning the first uh, some people are calling it the first fruits because it is uh, when Dr. Milana Kovringa decided to create Kwanzaa, he started celebrating the first fruits or the harvest of different um, peoples across Africa. This extra A is added, all right, and it becomes Kwanzaa just with an extra added A. In my mind, I remember how to spell Kwanzaa because I just remember that A for American because this is a African-American original holiday.
Okay, here we have in action some people celebrating Kwanzaa right here. And I'm sure that those brothers right there are explaining the significance of Kwanzaa. And I know some of you right now are like, ooh, does Kwanzaa have gifts? Does Kwanzaa have gifts? Yes. Kwanzaa does have gifts and yes you are to dress a special way during Kwanzaa and yes you are to eat special foods during Kwanzaa okay and it's called the Karamu program there are different songs that we sing uh, we pour we hear drums we call out names a lot of the gifts are handmade okay and some adults even fast on the day of Kwanzaa. So, Harambe is shouted once on the first day of Kwanzaa, and then the number of times increase. So the first day is Harambe. Then the second day of Kwanzaa is Harambe, Harambe. And then on the third day of Kwanzaa, Harambe, Harambe, Harambe. And then the fourth day of Kwanzaa, Harambe, 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 Harambe. And it's building the ashe, it's building the energy, it's building the excitement. You can feel it in your skin if you've never celebrated Kwanzaa. I invite you and implore you to incorporate it, right? Some people still celebrate Christmas. Some people celebrate other religions. Some people religious holidays. You can do that and still celebrate Kwanzaa. On the sixth day, there is something special to happen, okay? Uh, the sixth day is December 31st. The Karamu is held. The Karamu feast is a gathering of family and friends. And where the, where the Karamu feast is held, it's decorated in the beautiful colors of red, black, and green. The Kanara, which is what he's holding, is a candle holder and the Inkeka are placed in a room as part of the ceremony all right the Inkeka is um, the mat that lies underneath all of the um, all of the different symbols and all of the different parts of this table okay and these are really important parts and um, Zawade Zawadi, these are handmade gifts so if you're good at making earrings or jewelry or quilts or sculpting or making something like a, a, a cup holder or a pot holder or a drum who am i to tell you what you're good at right whatever it is you're doing as long as you're making it with your hands then that's a good part of zawadi all right there's so much more to learn about kwanzaa and i hope that i've given you some background I'm going to bring myself on back. How do I bring myself back? Don't fail me now. Don't fail me now. Well, I know how to do it. Don't panic. There we have it. All right, I hope I've given you some good background on Kwanzaa. All right, because what's the point in engaging in the art if you don't know what we're standing for? All right, so I implore you to get your supplies, get yourself organized, and then get prepared for the next video. I will see you soon. I'm artist Dia Naja, and I'm so happy to be presenting for the Redan Trotty Library of the DeKalb County Public Library System. See you soon.